The optimization algorithm is very complex and contains a lot of sub-iterations that we will not describe in detail. But to simplify, the master loop of the algorithm operates like this. The first initial sequence is to take a snapshot reference of the system, which usually is taken during the power-up, returning a power loss value that we define in this model as P loss zero. The algorithm is not limited to that function. It could also monitor other values such as power dissipation. When the reference is established, we then start the first cycle, during which we keep measuring the power loss. When the delta P increases from the initial P loss value, we initiate the intermediate bus voltage optimization sequence by sending a command to the advanced bus converter. This triggers setting the bus voltage to an optimized value. When optimal P-loss is reached, we close this sequence. Once the first sequence is closed, the supervisor continues to monitor P-loss until delta P varies again to initiate a new optimization trigger. This executes an optimization loop until P-loss returns to the optimized value. In addition to monitoring P-loss, Current is continually monitored to prevent overcurrent. This ensures that the intermediate bus voltage is always optimized to guarantee the proper voltage to the point of load. This is the general principle behind the optimization algorithm shown in this presentation. This diagram is self explanatory. It shows the results of the system efficiency optimization at different payload conditions. The orange line corresponds to the global system efficiency when the intermediate bus is fixed at 12 volts. The green line corresponds to the global system efficiency when bus voltage is optimized to payload condition. It is obvious that the reduction of power losses are much higher at light load, but still significant in the range of 30 to 50 percent, where, on average, over their lifetime, systems operate. Considering that our simulation represents a small application system, you can easily imagine the direct benefit of such technology when deployed in larger scale systems, such as data centers. Now let's have a look at the range of data behind those curves. These two tables are the result of our tests and simulations. They show the different areas of system operation and for each condition the optimized bus voltage and the resulting power loss reduction. In the two tables, the x-axis represents the system bus voltage powering the advanced bus converter BMR453, which in this case study varies from 36 to 75 volts. The y-axis represents the percentage of the total load applied to the six points of load. This varies from 0% load to 100% load, which corresponds to full traffic data in peak time. This table lists the optimized intermediate bus voltage for each point of the matrix system voltage versus load, whilst this table lists the power saved when compared to a fixed 12 volt intermediate bus. As you have already seen from the previous graph, the energy saving at low and medium load is impressive. Take, for example, a case where the input voltage is 45 volts, the system loaded at 30% of its full capacity, and the intermediate bus voltage optimized to 6.64 volts, and compare it to the same condition with a fixed 12 volts intermediate bus voltage. As you can see, the energy saved is equivalent to 3.77 watts, and you can follow the same principle to visualize the energy saved when using optimized bus voltage in function of the load condition. If we now look at another load condition, such as 80% of the load capacity, we see that we reached the point where the 12 volts bus is appropriated, but we see as well that increasing the bus voltage slightly at high load contributes to reduce the power losses a little. This demonstrates that even in such conditions, the algorithm is still operating. Something I would like to mention here when addressing high load conditions, because distribution losses very much depend on layout and of the amount of copper implemented at board level, we haven't included losses resulting from voltage distribution 
but the algorithm could be optimized to include such losses as well. There is another interesting behavior I would like to highlight. When the system bus voltage varies between 36 and 75 volts at 60% of the load, the line saving is relatively minor, but the algorithm is still operating and helping to save energy. This is because the BMR453 has integrated dead time control and built-in efficiency optimization firmware, and thus high intrinsic performances. 300 milliwatts might not seem much, but consider, for example, the thousands of subsystems embedded in a data center. The total energy saved would be significant. As I've already said, in this specific case study built on an Ericsson Power Module's 3E digital power solution, because of the intrinsic auto-adaptive performances of the advanced bus converter BMR453, the line variation of the system bus voltage has a very limited impact on global subsystem efficiency, and we will here briefly present our findings and conclusions. These charts represent curves related to power losses at several points of operation. The charts on the left are when system bus voltage is 45 volts, and on the right, 75 volts. The upper graphs illustrate the total system power losses, identified as P-loss in the vertical axis, and the intermediate bus voltage, V bus, represented in the horizontal axis. The output load has been adjusted from very low load condition to full load, and each curve reflects the power losses at the defined load condition specified at the right end of each curve. The lower diagrams show input current at system bus level. On the vertical axis is the value of the system bus current, I bus. The horizontal axis represents intermediate bus voltage, V bus. In the upper graphs, the input system bus current was plotted at the same load conditions from low load to full load. If we look at the top graphs, we can see there are almost no differences between the curves and the optimized power loss points, and are the same regardless of what system bus voltage is. The upper graph confirms what we presented in the previous slide, that the power losses are reduced to their minimum when the intermediate bus voltage is optimized. This results in lower bus voltage under low load conditions and increases when load increases to higher values. In summary, we can conclude that there is a lot of potential in using dynamic bus voltage and that an immediate benefit is to reduce energy consumption. This will result in lower CO2 emissions, reduced energy bills, and lower total cost of ownership. As I've shown, the algorithm presented in this case study didn't include distribution power losses, but such losses could easily be added to the simulation model and adapted to a single board configuration. Something we haven't shown in this presentation is that the algorithm is able to manage load transients when, for example, traffic data switch from low to high in fast rate. Another benefit of this algorithm is the ability to customize the trigger using different methods, from fully integrated into the board power manager, running on its own without external interaction, to optimization controlled through a PM bus start and stop command, or from a flag control high low load. Whatever method you choose, Energy optimization will help you to save energy. Thank you for listening, and I would like to invite you to learn more about the benefits of Ericsson Power Modules 3E Digital Power Modules by accessing the very large number of technical papers available from our website www.ericsson.com forward slash power modules.